Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. You're joining me, Bevla Rose, as I dive deep into the beauty, power, and truths about intimacy. Learn not only the practicals, but the heart behind what making love is all about. Delight your marriage. Hello, hello, this is Bella. I'm so grateful that you are on this call with me, whether you are nearby or whether you're far away. It's just amazing that we get to spend time together. I'm, I'm so grateful. And I want you to just take a moment and feel the Father's love for you. Deep breath in, deep breath out. The Lord of the universe has his eye on you. And he loves you. And he is eager to be proud of you. He loves you. He created you. He knows you. He's got his eye on you. He smiles when he thinks of you. You are precious to him. And I just feel like the fact that you listen to me, the fact that you pursue these kinds of resources to grow in your love for others and practically speaking, your love for your spouse, how to do it. um, He's so proud of you. This is huge. It's so good that you want to love your spouse well, because you know what? He loves your spouse too. And he wants your spouse to feel his love through you, through you. So I am just thrilled about this topic today. I think it's going to be really helpful for you. It's been helpful for me. And before we dive in, I do want to let you know that our clarity advisors are just, they're wonderful. They're wonderful humans and they love serving you. And if you have listened for a while, or even if this is your first time and you just um, are so excited to continue the journey, maybe the podcast has helped you and maybe there are some gaps or maybe it's helped you for a little while, but you're just not sure how to maintain this kind of stuff. And, or, or maybe you like what you're hearing and the philosophy seems right, but you're just not sure how to practically do it. Or you're like, gosh, there's 300 plus (laughs) episodes here. And I don't really know where to start or what really applies to me and my marriage. So that's what our clarity calls do is they give you an understanding to, to zoom out an opportunity to zoom out and then zoom back in of like, what is really happening? Where are the actual gaps in your understanding, in the ways you approach your spouse, And then our clarity advisor can really dissect what's going on and and how to help you. Because by God's grace, I I would encourage you to listen to those transformation stories. They're just, I mean, jaw-droppingly amazing. And um, our team gets to see way more than that on the inside because we definitely don't share all of the transformation stories. And plenty of people are not... uh, courageous enough necessarily to share (laughs) on a video testimonial their, uh, you know, their intimate story. So it's just so exciting when you get to listen and say, oh my gosh, that's what God is doing. And yes, that is what God is doing. And we give him all the glory for it. So today's episode, I am thrilled to share with you. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. Today, we're going to be going over three skills that are super practical. Now, I always want to give credit to the places that I kind of get my material. And these are are very much taken from good inside. It's a uh, um, Dr. Becky, and she's got a podcast. She's got an online community, and it came from her online resources. And uh, it's just fantastic. It's it's parenting based um, work, but um, I want to kind of 
again, utilize my experience and uh, work with men and women in my work and see how we can adapt it for um, our purposes in marriage. So certainly there's a lot of my own um, insights around these skills, but I want to give credit where credit's due. And and she's got some really cool practical things um, in her resources. So check that out. Good Inside is her is her podcast and her resources. All right. So first things first, this is all about having the skills you need to respond to situations with your spouse differently. So if you've listened to me for a while, you know, one of my big (laughs) things is no arguments. You can have disagreements, but they do not need to escalate to arguments. In fact, when you get to a place of an argument where everyone's emotions are high and elevated, you are really not able to do anything productive. In fact, for the most part, it just undermines your connection. And once you don't have that connection or it's undermined for a day, an hour, a week, however long it lasts, I mean, you're not, you're not growing in connection. You're either, you're, you're lessening that. It's it's just not a good idea. So what do you do in the midst? Let me give you these three tools. Now, one thing Dr. Becky talks about, and I love her mindset here, is that you have to practice it outside of the moment. You have to practice these skills before you need them. And that is so true. And, and I teach that as well. You have to get with these other, like, for example, in my men's program, I often pair people up and ask them to practice some of the skills we're learning so that on game day, when you're with your spouse, you're not trying to do this without, uh, having practiced. You, you get it, you know how to do this already. So first skill is drum roll, please. Deep breathing, deep breathing. Specifically, you want to do uh, four counts of a deep breath in. Do that with me. Oh, through your nose. That's important. Through your nose. Do some research in, in Google, if you'd like, to understand the difference between nose breathing and mouth breathing. Nose breathing is so much healthier for you. It's it's kind of crazy when you dive into the research. It's It's amazing. So forever now breathe through your nose. But from the <laughs> otherwise, um, oh, and one thing for men, if you struggle with um, erectile dysfunction and for women, it's so healthy for you to hum, which is also through your nose um, because it releases nitric oxide in your body, which is exactly what those blue pills do um, that men take often before they need to have an erection if they struggle with that. So uh, just a little insight. Um, All right. That was a, a good teaching tangent, if you will. So breathe through your nose, four counts in, hold it, and then breathe out eight counts. So the point is you want to breathe out twice as long as you breathe in. So instead of the mouth breathing very fast, that often happens when somebody's feeling nervous or anxious or fearful or panicky, what you can do is change your physiology towards where you want to go. So you know that maybe you just got accused, you just got attacked. You know, for for husbands, maybe you're feeling disrespected. Um, You feel like she's calling you, telling you that you're not good enough, even though she's using other words, but that's the message you're receiving. Okay, that's a red flag. You know you're getting triggered. The alarm bells are going off in your head. That is the signal that you need to take deep breaths deep, slow breaths, because the natural thing is for your body to get in that alarm state. And when your body gets in that alarm state, 
uh, what they call the lizard brain <laughs> is the only thing that's awake. So the front, um, I think it's the, the prefrontal cortex in front of your brain, which is the judging part of your brain, the judgment part of your brain, um, kind of goes offline. And then you've got your lizard brain, which is basically the brain that you had when you were a kid, that immature brain is the only thing that's responding. And so then we do this, you know, sadly, absolute ridiculous things in these arguments because we don't even have our judging brain online. So what you've got to do is do these deep, slow breaths so that your brain stays awake, your full brain, and you actually can access those judging moments. One thing to note, especially if you're a husband, is that a lot of times women feel abandoned if you leave a situation in the midst of an argument. And that is... um, very common and something that I feel as well when my husband doesn't stick around for an important conversation to me. It makes sense that you would want to leave a situation and and sometimes you may have to and you may have to respectfully ask, honey, I can feel myself getting upset and I don't want to say anything that I would regret. So if you don't mind us taking a break right now, but I know this is important and I will circle back. You've got to say it calmly. You've got to say it with respect and you've got to promise that you're going to come back to it and you have to come back to it, which is the scary part. I know, but you do have to come back to it. Um, so maybe both of you need a break. That's totally fine. However, there are times that she just needs you to be there and she needs you to breathe and be there. The nice thing about breathing is that you're still present. You can still pay attention and you don't have to, um, you're not checking out. You're, you're present. You can still listen. You can still understand. You can still have that curious mindset. So focus on having your slow breath in and double the pace of the breath out and do it through the nose. Because remember the anxiety, the frustration, all of that is short breaths. But when you get to long breaths, that's when you're able to keep your whole brain (laughs) present. And then you're able to slow your thoughts and stay in the curious mindset. That's super important. You want to be curious about how you, um, how your spouse is feeling. Where are they coming from? Where is this coming from? What are they feeling? Underneath the words. Because remember, words are just trying to communicate feelings. We're just trying to communicate. Um, And so maybe they're coming out as imperfect accusations and even meanness, but there's some thing that's underneath there, some woundedness, some something that is going on underneath there. And so I invite you to deep breath, stay present. So that's number one. Number two is to have a mantra. And I love this um, mindset of what is some phrase I can cling on to in the midst of trying to hold it all together. And um, she has some ideas. I have some ideas I want to share. So one for her that I love, especially with parenting, but I think it also works with marriage as well is I'm not broken. My child's not broken. I've got this. So there's a couple things there is we've got to understand what are the fears you have in the midst of that? What's triggering? What's coming up for you? So a lot of times for men, it's this disrespect piece that comes up. And so that might mean you're feeling like, oh my gosh, why can't I figure this out? Why can't I do better? Why can't I, um, something about you is is coming up there. Um, So in the moment, you know, with your spouse, I'm not broken. She's not broken. I've got this. And that helps you to stay calm. Stay calm. Because if you're not calm and you allow her emotions to infect you, 
then it just escalates and escalates and escalates. She needs you to be the steady, calm leader that she can rely on. Um, and then if you're a husband, sorry, if you're a wife, it's, it's a similar mindset. A lot of times you get flared up because the conversation is threatening your feelings of safety, emotional safety, uh, physical safety, certainly if that's an issue in your marriage. I mean, that, that's even, uh, that's huge and terrible. Um, but if it's emotional safety as well, <clears throat> or just emotional safety, that, that often just causes these huge alarm bells. And it's hard to do anything but fight back with huge accusations and mean words and rhetorical knives, right? That leave both of you bloody and, you know, it's, it's really, you, you can never take back your words, right? Um, God willing, you'll be able to, uh, um, forgive each other for those words, but there's no, there's no way you can take them back. So, so be really careful with your words, dear wife, dear husband, even in the midst of frustrating feelings. So in the same way for a wife, the, this is exactly applicable to you. This is, um, what's the mantra? I'm not broken. My husband's not broken. I've got this. You know, that is what you can say to yourself in the midst. Now, maybe that doesn't make sense to you. Maybe there's a totally different mantra you need. And here's one that I think is really good and biblical. Um, Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Because in the midst of the accusations, in the midst of the pain, if you can go to the place that Jesus went to when he hung on the cross, when he was humiliated, tormented, uh, when people laughed at him and people literally tortured him, and he could respond by saying, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, isn't that the heart of Jesus we want to be carrying around? Isn't that who we want to be to everyone in our lives, including our most important human assignment, our own spouse? Yes, that is what we want. <laughs> That's what I want. And, you know, what I notice sometimes is I get out of practice. I get out of practice of loving my spouse the way they receive love. And so we all do, you know, if I'm teaching this and I get out of practice, I mean, <laughs> I think that means it's a natural human thing to get out of practice. But if we can come again and again and again to the heart of Jesus, um, so, so, so in the midst of the argument, you're breathing slow, you say, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Um, and then another empowering thought after that, I've got this. I can do this. And remember in Philippians where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A lot of times we'll have that scripture on a, on a bumper sticker or a baseball team's shirt, or I don't know. It, it just is interesting because it, uh, it doesn't have the context of what that verse is talking about, but it's actually talking about um, Paul being in prison and saying, I know what the worst is and I know what the best is because I've lived both. And I found out that even in the midst of the worst times, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So let me go ahead and read to you the beginning of the, the chunk of verses that gives some context. So uh, Philippians 4.10, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. 
I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Okay. And so, uh, I would encourage you to, you know, read, read the rest, but I'll, um, I'll, uh, add the very, uh, skip down a bit, verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so what I think is really great there, well, many, many great things, is that no matter what is happening to him, how he is being uh, tortured in prison, um, he's saying God is going to supply, you know, God is giving him everything he needs. Uh, and, and God is going to supply their needs. And I think that that's important for us to know in the moment, in the moment of frustration, in the moment of anger, we can say, I can do this. I can do this. God forgive him for he doesn't know what he's doing. I can do this. So you need both of those. And I wanted to give you some scriptural backing because it's scriptural. God, forgive her. She doesn't know what she's doing. I can do this. So as you're deep breathing, as you're in the midst of completely getting blasted for something you don't deserve, God, forgive her. She doesn't know what she's doing. I can do this. I can stay in this. I can have compassion. I can have grace for her. And again, these things have to be practiced outside of the moment. They have to be practiced outside the moment. And when I say practiced outside of the moment, some really good opportunities to practice this is um, during your day in random situations. So I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, sometimes my own email inbox makes my heart move in the wrong way. Like even just a a title, a caption that I don't know, a subject line that I don't I don't even know the contents of. Maybe it's some promotional nonsense and I'm ready to just have an accusing uh, heart around. (laughs) And in that moment, can I deep breathe and I can say, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And say, I can do this. Which gives just a, you know, even though though it's tiny, it it might be just some tiny whatever it may be. Uh, Or maybe you see sin in the world and... And that's another opportunity. Instead of getting frustrated and angry and it, it ruining your day, can you say, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I can do this. What if it's traffic? Instead of getting angry and making, uh, uh, you know, seeing that your heart is getting frustrated, instead of, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I can do this. Right? I can do this. Right? I can stay in this. I can still live in the fruits of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in me. I can stay in the place of the middle of your will. I can walk like you, Jesus. I can think like you, Jesus. I can uh, spend my um, emotions like you, Jesus. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in the midst of where I am right now. That is the second tool. The third tool that Dr. Becky talks about is MGI find the MGI. I love this. What is MGI? She calls it the most generous interpretation. Look for the MGI. Look for the most generous interpretation of what just happened. And again, you have to practice this outside of the situation, but we can use the example of traffic. Uh, Let's say someone cuts you off and is you know, driving ridiculously and they certainly were not following the rules and you get angry and it's unsafe. And there's so many reasons why you would get angry, but what's the most generous interpretation? If we can look for that, well, maybe their wife's having a baby in the back seat and they need to get to the hospital. (laughs) That's often what my husband and I say when something crazy happens on the road, we're like, well, They probably are having a baby in the back seat. Let's let's give them extra room. Get there, buddy. Go, go, go. 
<laughs> and isn't that a happier state of mind anyway? <laughs> and then you're not mad at every other car uh, and you're not wasting your emotions on something just stupid. <laughs> Do you mind me saying that? Because it just is. Why waste your emotions on something that is just, why not just let it go? But in the moment, can we think of the most generous interpretation? Now, the only way you can get to being able to do that in the moment is if you practice outside of the moment. So in the moment with your spouse, when you get to, oh, they must have misunderstood me. They must think that I'm X, Y, Z. The only way you can get there is if you practice outside of it. So let's say you guys had an argument. Okay, we fail. We have to get back up, dust ourselves off. But then afterwards, you can reflect and say, can I find the MGI here? What's the most generous interpretation of what just happened? What's the most generous interpretation of what just happened? So let's say your wife is telling you how to uh, load the dishwasher And it just seems completely ridiculous to you why she would get so upset that you're doing it, quote, the wrong way. All right, reflect later. um, What's the most generous interpretation of that? Well, it might be that she wants to make sure that the dishes are clean so that there's no soap or suds or mess on it afterwards and it doesn't have to be washed again and, and making sure the kids have have clean dishes to, to eat from. Like, I, I mean, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. That's <clears throat> So, okay, so now that you've got the most generous interpretation, that helps to give her grace and it also helps to give um, maybe some insight where you could say, honey, I thanks for making sure you want this stuff clean. Uh, you know, is that, is that the concern is, is the concern that you're, you're, you're worried about it not being clean for the kids or, you know, and you give those, uh, the benefit of the doubt, another obvious way to say it. But, um, when you give that kind of an explanation to it, then you're not accusing or saying she doesn't respect me. She thinks I'm stupid. Um, those sorts of things, because that's going to trigger you into, uh, ways that are, um, not going to be kind ways of speaking to her. And it's going to cause your connection to, um, well, it's going to cause you to disconnect emotionally. And then that, you know, can be a negative spiral to, to more and worse things. Or what if you interpret his, uh, telling you where to drive and being frustrated that you're not going the fastest way of, okay, what's the most generous interpretation of his frustration there? Maybe it's that, he doesn't want to waste gas and he is really thinking about the financial impact of how we drive and and where we go because he's taking care of our family financially. Gosh, that's a generous interpretation. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, honey, for for making sure that we we don't waste gas and want to make sure that we're going the right ways. And even if you say something like that and, and he has an opportunity to reflect and be, you know, like, yeah, I am a little more magnanimous than I... (laughs) than I really thought I am. And then, you know, people live up to the identities you give them a lot of times. And if you have a good identity that you have given your spouse, they, they will live up to that in a greater degree. But that's the work you have to do is find the MGI. So in all these different circumstances, slowly, you're going to get better at these skills if you practice them, again, outside of the situation. Because if we remember that our spouse is our highest human assignment, game day is when we're with our spouse. Game day is not when we're with the uh, grocery store clerk and we say, have a good day, and uh, we smile, and we might even say, God bless you. Like, great, great. That's awesome, but that is way less important than the way you greet your spouse in the morning, than the way you listen to your spouse when they have hard feelings going on, than the way you are patient with them when they say, make a mistake, or they say something that is wrong, or they present themselves poorly in a public situation. How do you respond to them? That matters more than your your conversations with acquaintances. It matters more because what you're doing is growing your character. And when you have a good character, it shows in every other way. 
I'm growing in these ways too. So don't worry. I'm, I'm right there alongside of you. We're all growing. But how do we do this um, so that our hearts look more like Jesus? Here are three skills to practice. You and I get to practice together. When you're getting frustrated and you need to excuse yourself politely from a situation so you can breathe and you can think about what's the most generous interpretation here. And you can say to yourself, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And I can do this. I can do all things through you. Right? When you say those things, when you practice those things, when you do them when you're by yourself, it'll be easier to do them with your spouse. It'll be easier to do them with your kids. Practice these things. You can do them. You can do them. And I suggest you write these things down. Deep breath in, slower breath out. That's number one. Have that mantra, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And I can do this through you. And number three, look for the most generous interpretation. Find it. Even if you have to do it after the situation, find it and do it inside. Even if you never mention that. MGI to them, do it on the inside. Well, I am just thrilled again that you are listening, that you are seeking to love your spouse and everyone else in your life well and better. And let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, you strengthen us. We can do all things. We can be in prison and still say rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice through you who strengthens us. That is true strength. That is true strength, God. I pray, Lord, that you want us to grow in our grace and our capacity to love others well, in our capacity to have true, deep character. You want us to grow in these ways. God, give us grace to practice in traffic, practice when we get frustrated with the kids, practice with our spouse, and how all of these things matter in eternity, and it'll matter in other ways, in other seasons of our lives that we need those muscles strong because we'll be tested, we'll be tempted, we'll be tried in bigger ways. And you want us to be mature. You want us to grow. So thank you for your love, your kindness, your leadership, the way you grow us. And we just are so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you're as excited about these tools as I am. I can't wait to practice them. I hope that you will practice them. And uh, we'd love to have you on the inside to journey this road with you to love your spouse well and witness God do incredible miracles in your life. So if you're interested in that, you want on the inside, go to delightyourmarriage.com slash CC and sign up with a clarity call, share your story, have a listening ear. People have even reached back out to us months after they've had their clarity call uh, and they, for whatever reason, were not able to join the program or it wasn't the right fit for any reason. And they've actually shared how important that clarity call was for their journey and how God has shifted things for them. So <laughs> it's awesome no matter what, and we'd love to have you on. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.